On the 8th of January 2019, I decided to take on my most difficult challenge yet. I want to get a Hardcore Iron Man The Dormant title, which is a title for completing the entire Telos log. If you die on a Hardcore Iron Man, you're done, so we've got to get this right on the first try. A link to the series playlist is in the description down below, and I hope you all enjoy. Forcing a Dagonoth King's assignment was a really good idea, but it doesn't work particularly well until I'm level 60 magic. Once I'm 60 magic, I'll have access to the Guthic Staff, which not only is 10 tiers above my current magic setup, but it also has a special attack that will increase my affinity or base hit chance towards anything I'm fighting. So it's going to be important to get, and even though it involves venturing into the wilderness, as soon as I'm level 60 magic, I'm going to go for it. This is a risk I normally wouldn't take on an account like this, but if I'm to succeed at Telos, especially if I'm planning on starting with lower tier gear, it's not going to happen without a Guthic Staff. That's level 38 Slayer coming in. Level 58 magic, two more levels till we got the G Staff. Can't wait. Don't panic, Ryan. Don't panic, Ryan. Don't panic, Ryan. <sighs> I, I freaking knew that was gonna happen, man. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out! <laughs> oh, man. I, can, I need to be more careful. That was stupid. 39 Slayer coming in. 40 Prayer. That's actually quite helpful. That is the end of the first ever Reaper assignment on the account. 10,000 Slayer experience. We're now level 41. And the first Reaper points on the account as well. Not too bad, and we still have an absolute ton of Slayer task left. 42 Slayer coming in. Actually, I'd go as far as to say it would be a very good thing here. Oh my god! Dude, never do that again! Do you see that? He just teleported on me! 59 magic, one more level until we are ready for the Guthic Staff. And also, that's one of the requirements for Family Crest Quest, so we can finally go and get our, uh, get our smelting gauntlets. All we need is 40 crafting, and I've got about, I don't know, a thousand gems in the bank? So we're pretty well good to go there. Level 45 Slayer. Not a bad level coming in there. Before getting a Gothic Staff, I want 1,000 total. At 1,000 total, you can buy yourself an extra life, which is gonna come in handy in case I disconnect or anything bad happens later on. I considered not purchasing the extra life on this account, but I realize if I'm gonna get to Telos, I'm gonna need all the help I can get, and it would be the absolute worst to lose all my progress on this account, especially if it's due to a disconnect or a DDoS. It's time to train. Starting at 9.36 total, you'd think getting to 1,000 would take a good long while, but my stats are extremely imbalanced, so I wouldn't be surprised if we're done this in less than an hour. Alright guys, it's time for some XP. 1,000 herb XP? Oh, this is so good. Look at my total level. It's about to just fly up. Oh, that's actually beautiful. And, uh, yeah. 37 herby, 14 thieving, 54 runecrafting, 13 fishing, 26 fire making, 37 wood cutting. While I'm training up my stats, I feel like this is a good opportunity to talk about the future of this series, mostly with regard to leeching bosses and group content. I'm sure a lot of you guys might be wondering why I haven't done things like token farms yet, or why I haven't started doing bosses in God Wars 1 or God Wars 2 in groups. The reason is this. Although there are a lot of methods that are very overpowered on an Iron Man account, they're very easy, they're very fast, and they are technically efficient, I don't want to feel like my accomplishments on this account are because I'm a streamer or a YouTuber or a content creator and people let me leech things. I don't want that at all and I'm not interested. I want this to be a challenge, not only for me, but for you guys as well. I want to see if there's a way for me to get all the way to Telos and beyond with no leeching at all. This means that if I'm doing group content, there are two constraints. First and foremost, if I'm doing anything with anybody else, I need to have similar stats and gear to them. But with that rule in place, I'd still be able to take advantage of the fact that I'm a hardcore Iron Man and I could do content with regular Iron Man accounts. For example, I could do four man Vindicta at a very low level and I could have other people tank. So because of this, any boss that is technically soloable or any encounter that can be done by oneself, I have to solo 50 times before unlocking group mode. This guarantees that I've got the stats, the gear, and the prowess to get through that boss fight before I'm able to do it with anybody else. The Hardcore Iron Man is now 1,000 total, which, honestly, I'm not surprised we made it here, but I know there were some people who didn't think I'd make it this far. So, you know, progress is progress. Let's go get our Gothic Staff. The wilderness is a scary place, so I decided to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and also log in to the French servers. And also, as an aside, as someone who's been speaking French for a good portion of my life, I had no idea the word for wand was baguette. So we're gonna take my baguette mystique and let's go get ourselves a gothic staff. <laughs> Alright, I'm in the I'm in the Colonian fight. The whole account is at risk right now. Statue de Gothics. Après ça, he will give me my gothic staff. <laughs> it's called canned gothics. 
I casted Divine Storm a hundred times. That means we can now cast the Guthic Staff special attack outside of the wilderness, outside of the training area, so we are good to go. There's actually only one more thing I'm gonna have to do in the wilderness on this account, and that's get a rune pouch. It's not very dangerous, it's not risky, and it won't be for a very long time either. So for the foreseeable future, we're free from the wilderness. That's level 73 smithing. As you can see by my coin pouch, it's not looking too great. So I kind of just want to see how much XP I have with the Necronium stuff I've already mined up. So I've got about a thousand Necronium bars. I'm just going to make them all into plate bodies plus four just over the next couple days. And then I'll just see how close to 80 smithing I am. If I'm close enough to 80 where I can just kind of make the push to get to that level, I'll do that and then I'll be able to mine Bayonite to get even better GP. But if I only get to 76 or 77, I'm a little ways off. I'm going to elk some of the Necronium plate bodies and then I'll bury all the rest. Now that we're starting to get into some early game PVMing, it's time to get myself a ring of life. I can make one myself. Crafting's high, magic's high, pretty easy to do. And that is my first save guard in case of a disconnect as well. I'm going to be camping this ring for pretty much everything I'm doing. It's not a great safeguard at bosses because if a boss can do more than 10% of your life points, there's a good chance the ring won't proc. That being said, for something like a slayer task, it's a great safeguard. If I'm to disconnect in combat, there's a very good chance it pops off and it will save my account. With my newfound gothic staff, I also want to try out barrows. I'll be doing it as safely as possible, and I just want to get an idea for how difficult it is. It's a very good source of runes for daily viswax, and it's frequently my reaper assignment as well, so the sooner I can start doing barrows runs, the better. If this run doesn't go well, I likely won't be back for a while. DH tunnel on the first barrows run, alright. Well, Jagex wants me to die here, clearly. Um, appreciate that one guys, great. Don't you guys love getting the one guy that can one hit me in the in the freaking tunnel, dude. Okay, it's time to eat up and it's time for our Darok tunnel. Please die, buddy. Uh oh. Oh, I'm out of prayer. Oh, eat. Prayer, 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 prayer. Easy. Let's uh, let's never do that again. First sparrows run of many on the account, but we we won't be back here for a long time. Here we go. You know that's not bad. We got some bolt rackage, death runes. I'll take it. The Guthic Staff is so much better than the Mystic Wand Orb. Not only am I higher level, I've got the special attack to increase my hit chance, and I've got Sonic Wave instead of Concentrated Blast. Basically, my kill times are three times faster than they were before, and this task is going to be done in no time. Level 46 Slayer coming in. Maybe we'll get our first unique as well. Nope, that's a keg of beer. That's okay. You know, we'll get something better than the keg at some point. Getting a drop on an Iron Man just feels so incredibly awesome. I, I can't even explain it or describe it, but if you've got an Iron Man account, you'll know the feeling. It's so much different than a main account, and being able to get excited over something like a Warrior Ring is really refreshing for me. It's cool. That's the end of the Reaper assignment, 48 Slayer, and that is another 10 Reaper points on the account as well. I thought that was a Zerker Ring. I was like, I was so excited for a split second. <sighs> That's a big one right there. Level 50 Slayer coming in. We can get the Blood Velds. That's actually a pretty critical task. Level 63 Magic. And 78 Combat as well. Oh, that's 43 Prayer as well. Yes, I can finally protect from melee. Hold up, let's get that on the bar right now. That's actually important. Nicely done. So now we can, uh, we can get the Mad Flicks going. Interpret that however you will. Oh, there it is. That's the Dragon Hatchet. Look at us! I uh, I was starting to feel a little dry, and uh, yeah, no longer. It's looking pretty good. This will be the last Rex skill for now. Did a good like 50 kills this trip. Was quite solid. Got a lot of levels, and uh, some medium blunt salvage as well. Pretty nice. One more trip to get the task. Then we got 49 Dagonoth kills left on the count. That is also going to be a good 52k Slayer XP coming through as well. That is an absolutely huge level, level 17 farming. You mean, you mean now breed rabbits, which means we have access to player owned farms. Most important thing about that is not actually the rabbits, but the fact that we can now do honeycombs. My farming level is about to absolutely shoot up. That was like the last thing I needed to do pretty much. So this might be one of the most broken things in the entire game for early game farming. I, I think I'm literally gonna get 15 levels right here. Just like once a day you can do this. You load it up, it's pretty much free. And then you just fly. Like we're absolutely humming right now. So that's why 17 farming. I said in the last episode, as soon as you get that threshold, you're pretty much in business. As this video progresses, you'll see my farming level increasing. And if you're wondering how I was training it, this is how. That's another dragon hatchet. Level 54 Slayer. And a Zerker Ring. Just kidding. Made you look. Level 65 Magic. My wizardry skill is 
quickly improving. That's actually a Lunar Diplomacy wreck as well. So I've got the Crafting wreck banked. I think the last big wreck there is uh, Woodcutting. So we could actually, we could consider doing that soon. <laughs> nice. That's, uh, that's my third Dragon Hatchet in the last uh, 25 kills. 55 Slayer coming in. Leap Bladed Spear it means we can actually do Turoths, which is, yeah, really good. Great task to get. Level 66 Magic. I think that gets me access to the Wizard's Guild. And on top of that, I've got Vulnerability as well. So we're going to get into the Magic Guild after this, start buying up some runes. And that's basically a 10% DPS increase wherever we go, so long as I can hit the thing. That's one of the most important Magic levels, actually, of every level in the game. That is the end of the first Slayer assignment on the account. We managed to get all the way up to level 56 Slayer. I believe we went from 50 to 66 Magic as well. Everything was perfect. This worked out exactly how I hoped it would. And at this point, we've now bypassed all the crappy low-level tasks that are generally pretty terrible to do. We've got access to jellies and turoths and blood velds and all those better XP tasks. So now, if we want to start power slaying, we can actually do it. Then, with that one already pulled up, I can pull this one, go in there, that's going to unlock that door, and then I can pull the other lever on the other side, open the opposite door, and that door's open. And we're good. Okay, door should be open here. Beauty. Look at him go. He's absolutely insane. Your boy's got it covered. That's one. That's two. See ya, bro. What a boss battle. Family crest complete. Um, so a couple of the big things here. Ability to store silver and gold in your ore box and metal bank. That's a big one because I can now mine concentrated gold ore um, for all my crafting training. And then ore box, metal bank, easy. Um, also with the gauntlets, I can smith 60 at a time. And I believe it increases the speed as well. So... Yeah, that's a really big thing to do. It feels like the objective in this video has been a little bit unclear. We've done a mix of Slayer, we've done some questing, we've done some skilling, very much all over the place. And that's by design. I'm working on multiple things at the same time, and very soon these episodes are going to be very singularly focused. We're going to have one big main objective that we're going to work towards and then hopefully achieve each video. At this very moment, I'm working on completing the Medium Lumbridge Achievement Diary. The Explorer's Ring 3 has a Cabbage Teleport option, which is going to come in handy for herb runs. Now that I've started slaying, I've got a good amount of seeds, and I've also now got the farming level required to start planting them as well. While I'm training my fishing to 30 and my cooking to 40 for the Medium Lumbridge tasks, I, I thought I would take this moment to talk a little bit about fishing streams. Not fishing with an F, like what I'm doing right now in-game, but fishing with a P. As you guys may know, I live stream almost everything I'm doing on YouTube over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the RS guy. A lot of you guys tune in and keep me company, whether it's while I'm skilling or I'm PVMing. Now, a byproduct of that is people know me. People know who I am, and because of that, sometimes bad people try and take advantage. You'll frequently see at the top of the RuneScape directory a stream that looks like mine and it says I'm quitting or I'm leaving RuneScape or there's double XP or anything like that. And I just want to let you guys know not to click on any of those links, not to fill in any of your information on them. It's not me. I'm not going anywhere. And if you click on them and put in your information, they are going to take all of your RuneScape gold and then probably real world trade it. So definitely don't do that. I'm not quitting, don't believe anything there, and just because there's a high viewer account does not mean it's real. If you want to figure out if a stream is legitimate or not, look for a verified checkmark badge on any partnered stream, see if you can type in the chat, look for the follower account, or quite simply bookmark the Twitch pages of the people who you like to watch. That way you can click on that one link and you don't accidentally end up anywhere bad. That was a long PSA, just long enough to get us level 40 cooking and 30 fishing. The achievement is to cook a lobster, and I don't have the fishing level to fish a lobster. So instead, I'm going to go to Dagonoth's in the lighthouse and hopefully get a raw lobster as a drop. Not a pro- Yes! Raw lobster! Oh my god, that took three trips! Okay. I- I am literally- I am going to come down here and massacre every single Dagonoth a thousand times if I burn this thing. Oh, thank you. Took a while to get, actually. Like, probably five, six hours to get these done, just because the fishing and cooking took a long time. There we go! We've got ourselves an Explorer's Ring 3 with the Cabbage Port feature, which- Pretty well adds another farming patch to my farming rotation. Unreal. This episode was really all about rounding out my stats, getting things a little more balanced, and getting ready to execute the plan. At the start of the next episode, we'll be talking about exactly what that plan is, and then we're going to finally be accomplishing one of the things that I set out to do at the start of episode one. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.